Brian, could you tell us a little bit about um, the procedure called HIPAC and the potential benefits of using HIPAC in managing patients with gastric cancer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, HIPAC gets a lot of um, press just because it's an easy abbreviation to say. And, and it's, uh, yeah, you know, a bit of a charged word because of that. But but it's only used in combination with cytoreduction. And so, um, you know, that involves removing really all peritoneal disease. And, and I think the thing that's different for gastric is, is it really has to be all, you know, disease has to be removed. And then um, the treatment is to add um, chemotherapy within the peritoneum. And typically agents are chosen that uh, work better with heat. And so we add heat uh, and, uh, and that's, that's the rationale. So you've published and you've done a lot of work on this and you had your own um, prospective phase two trial looking at the role of HIPAC in gastric cancer patients. And this uh, was just featured in a recent publication with longer follow-up. You know, you've shown that there was some patient that really benefited from this treatment. What do you think um, are the most important factors that lead to the improvement in survival in these patients? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first thing I'll say is it's a select group. And, and so, you know, that's um, all the limitations of a single arm phase two apply here. And uh, these were patients that had not progressed on um, first line systemic therapy, or, or a few of them, I think, were already on second line. But, but the bottom line is the most important predictor of how they did was their response to systemic therapy. And that kind of makes sense, right? You know, if they responded to systemic, well, you know, you can hypothesize that you've controlled uh, the disease outside of the peritoneum and within the peritoneum. Um, you know, people people always like to say that chemotherapy does not work within the peritoneum due to the mm -hmm. plasma peritoneal barrier, um, but it does. I mean, I've seen it work. I've done enough laparoscopies where I know it works. It just, it doesn't work great and it's limited. And, and that's why I think, you know, some of these intraperitoneal uh, treatments do make sense. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about the selection of your patients for this therapy based on the peritoneal index score, based on how much disease they have? Does that play a role in your selection of patients? Yeah, yeah. It, it, and and I, I went through a progression. Like the first trial I did was an earlier phase two, and and I did not combine gastrectomy and HIPEC. And I just did kind of repeated HIPECs. And those patients had to have no imaging evidence of peritoneal disease. So that was my way to kind of keep the disease burden low. But the one, the, the most recent trial, the one you're, you're referring to, um, I did not have a peritoneal carcinomatosis index cutoff. Um, but again, um, I, I was able to select the patients that had a, a low PCI, uh, but, but there wasn't a real cutoff. Um, and doing that, um, you know, once I got to the point where if I saw a patient that I said I could remove mm -hmm. all of their peritoneal disease with a cytoreduction, they were a candidate and they were able to go on the trial. Uh, and of course, the patients with the low PCI did better. Yeah, and that's exactly what you referred to earlier, that complete cytoreduction is critical as well as response to systemic therapy. What is recovery rate from high back? For how long do patients stay in the hospital and when can they resume systemic therapy if needed? Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in my most recent trial, which is actually getting a little bit old now, I think we ended it in you know, 2021, um, you know, we were just learning in that trial. And so patients did tend to stay in the hospital for a long time and, and there's a significant um, morbidity rate, but there's been a couple of trials that have come out now. One is the um, Gastropec trial, trial, and that was out of Germany. Um, and they compared cytoreduction to cytoreduction in HIPEC. No increase in complications by adding the HIPEC. And there's also some of the safety data um, from, I know these are getting confusing, but the gastro chip yeah. trial, which is- The names are confusing. Ad, yes. Yeah, adjuvant HIPEC. But the bottom line is that, that was another trial where they compared gastrectomy to gastrectomy and HIPEC and um, no in, increase in complications with the HIPEC. So so the bottom line is I think um, adding HIPEC currently does not increase the complication rate. Um, you can expect patients to stay in the hospital probably a week or so longer if they have a complication. Um, and I think it's like with most things, you know, only half of patients, right, in all these perioperative trials, resectable patients, you know, get on post-op chemo, mm -hmm. probably about the same after a gastrectomy and a HIPEC, and it takes, you know, six, eight weeks until you can get, get there. Yeah, so patient selection is critical, and I'm sure you're dealing with select patients in your practice, but I think moving these therapies into even standard treatments will still require appropriate patient selections. So speaking of standard treatments, are there any guidelines on how to incorporate HIPAC 
into treatment of patients with this disease? Yeah, yeah. You know, the surgeons have been working on this for a while, and um, you know, there's uh, an international group that has some guidelines, um, and there's a group within the United States. And uh, first, uh, that was run out of a group that was um, uh, kind of coordinating it with the University of Chicago, and now that uh, Dr. Taraga is at Yale, uh, he's redoing the guidelines there. And, and so those guidelines should be coming out soon, um, updated guidelines, but it has made its way into the NCCN guidelines. And so I think that's kind of the, the biggest um, hot topic for peritoneal disease and gastric right now is, is that it is included um, uh, in those guidelines. But I think, you know, just to speak to those for a little bit, you know, it, it's a very select group. It's peritoneal only metastatic disease, treated with uh, systemic chemotherapy. Uh, in the guidelines, it says six months. You know, I disagree a little bit with that. I kind of like four months of chemo, um, but regardless, somewhere between four and six months. And then patients with this PCI, with this index, you know, less than 10. Uh, some studies say less than seven, mm -hmm. um, um, but, but yeah, it's in, it's in the guidelines now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting to see. I, I do some work in all of the metastatic gastroesophageal cancer as well. And so it's it's all about patient selection. And I think um, those who have good response to systemic therapy um, and have isolated uh, sites of metastatic disease can probably benefit from some local regional therapies. I'm going to switch gears just a little bit and ask you a question about intraperitoneal chemotherapy and how does that compare to HIPA? Because I know you're doing some work with IP chemo as well and your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, people people might assume that surgeons just want to kind of rush in and, and cut the stomach out, but uh, it, it, for patients with perineal disease, um, you, you know, we all recognize that we want to be selective with that. You know, that's where you get your hit in your quality of life and where the complication rate goes up. And so, all of us that are in this field are looking for something that can beat down that perineal disease before we put patients through a gastrectomy. So, something like normothermic, repeatable intraperitoneal paclitaxel. Um, is, is being studied a lot. And so paclitaxel is a great drug. We know it works in gastric cancer. It's big, it stays in the peritoneum. And there's a lot of experience in Asia where they will just put the port, you know, similar to a port that goes on the chest wall, but this is a little bigger port and it goes in the abdomen. And then you can just repeat the paclitaxel. And there's different ways of doing it. Uh, like anything um, in these trials is controversial. You can do peritoneal only, you can do bi-directional as giving systemic and intraperitoneal. Um, but theoretically, again, it makes a lot of sense. You, you know, it, it's pretty safe. Um, you can use relatively high doses. It's repeatable. And, and it may be a way to select out patients uh, to beat down that peritoneal disease before we, we put them through a gastrectomy. And a reduction, yeah. Well, this is great. Um, thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. I think this is very helpful. And hopefully we'll have more and more data to support more aggressive treatment for these patients.